Now that you've corrected your text, you'll want to preserve your hard work on disk. The way you begin the saving operation is by selecting the so-called block menu. You'll find it on the top right-hand side of the screen under other menus. We'd like you to use a control K to call up that block menu. Do that now. As soon as the block menu appears on the screen, you can see that there are no less than three ways for you to file your text. If you choose S for save, you save your file, but the document you're working on remains on the screen. This is the option to choose when you're working on a longish document that should be saved every two or three pages for safety. The D for done with this document command tells the system that you've done or finished the editing you want to do on this document and that you're ready to go back to the no file menu to perform some other function, while the X for exit command says that you've completely finished with WordStar and would either like to leave the computer or perform some other non-word processing task. When you become more familiar with WordStar, you'll be able to file your text without first coming through the block menu. You'll simply hold down Control and press one of the filing commands like KS or KD. Later, you should take time to try out KS, KD and KX. But for now, simply press D, as if you wanted to file what you typed without leaving the WordStar package. Do that now. After some whirring in the disk drive, you'll be told that your file is being saved. Soon, the directory under the command panel on the screen will confirm that your file is there. Now, the next thing we'd like to show you is how to prepare a simple form letter on the computer. Such a letter need only be written once, then every time you want it, you'd only have to make a very minor change to reuse it. But letters, especially official letters, have to be formatted. WordStar offers you a host of sophisticated formatting commands. You can read about them in the user manual. Then you'll see that the system allows you either to format on the screen or by means of dot commands, codes that you type into your text, to tell the system what you want your document to look like when it's printed. You'll be able to explore and master all of WordStar's on-screen and printer commands when you start working through the manual. All we want to do here is to give you a sense of how easy formatting is by showing you how to set left and right margins. Let's imagine that you want to write a short letter. The first thing you must do is to create another file. Select D for document file from the No File menu. Do that now. In reply to the question about the name of your file, just enter your file name and a new number, since the system does not like you to start two files with identical names. If your first file name was Mary1, or John1, you could name this file Mary2 or John2. Enter your file name followed by a full stop and the letters TXT and press return. Do that now. When the whirring stops and you find yourself back in the main menu, you should press Control O and have a quick look at all the on-screen formatting features. That's Control O. Do that now. The features offered by the on-screen menu are pretty well self-explanatory. Later on, after you finish with this tape, you should take time to test them out one by one. WordStar enables you to do everything that you'd expect from a good electric typewriter and more. If you're not sure about the meaning of the less familiar features like paragraph tab, ruler from line and soft hyphen, you should look them up in the WordStar manual afterwards. But now let's just set left and right margins for your letter. Press L. Do that now. A useful left margin setting is 15 spaces. So in reply to the question left column number, type 15 and press return. But remember to use the number one. Do that now. You can set the right hand margin without going back to the on screen menu simply by entering control O R. Do that now. You could now set the right-hand margin to any permitted length, but try typing 55 and press return. Do that now. Congratulations, you've changed the shape of your page. The ruler line below the instruction panel shows you that the page is narrower than it was when you started. The simplest type of formatting is done with the return key. 
Every time you press return, you start a new line. Now see if you can create a short standard letter on the screen. It needn't be more than three paragraphs long. You can write whatever you like, but you may find it helpful to use the letter we've printed on the back of the card inside the cassette box. The sample text on the card also shows where you should press return in order to achieve the business-like effect. Stop the cassette until you've written your letter. Now we'll assume that you've written a letter that is well laid out and free from typing errors. You should now file it by pressing Control K X, as if you'd finished with WordStar for the day and wanted to return to the operating system before switching the computer off. Press Control K X. Do that now. That should return you to the prompt sign you had in the beginning. Now we'd like you to try retrieving your letter as if you wanted to edit or modify it in some way. Try to remember how to get back into WordStar, how to call up a document file, and how to move the cursor through the document to a place where you can change something or add something. We'll just remind you of the sequence, but please don't do anything until we finish running through it. Type WS next to the prompt sign and press Return. When the WordStar No File menu comes on, select D for Document File. When asked, just enter your file name and latest number, which would be two if this is only the second document you filed, and don't forget the full stop and the extension txt. When your letter reappears, make some changes, add a paragraph or something, and then refile the letter with the command Control K D. That should test your ability to get in and out of WordStar. Stop the cassette until you've done all that. In case you need to be reminded of any of the steps, just stop the tape and wind back to listen again. Then, when you return to us, we'll have something to say about backup copies and text searches. We're sure you had no trouble getting back to your letter. If you refiled with Control K D, you're back on the No File menu, and you'll notice that there are now two versions of your letter. As you see, your file names are the same, but the extension or file type is different. One has your file name with the extension txt, while the other bears your file name with the extension bak. Think of the txt file as the son or daughter of bak. WordStar always keeps a so-called backup copy of every file, so that if anything terrible happens to your edit, you can still get the previous version back. Every time you open an existing file for editing, the last copy, as it was before you opened it this time, will be kept on disk for your protection. The original changes its surname within the system from txt to bak, while the offspring, the file you are editing, becomes the new txt. There's only one snag, though, and that is that you cannot actually use the backup copy until you change its name again to something different from either parent or offspring. And、that's another fail-safe device, and one we haven't got time to go into here. And don't worry if you found that explanation just a trifle confusing. The file backup system will become clear to you very soon after you start using WordStar regularly. But now let's get back to work. On the back of your cassette card, you should find a famous, if rather infantile, nursery rhyme. We urge you to copy it because it's absolutely ideal for demonstrating one of WordStar's most powerful functions. You should now take a few minutes to open a new file bearing your file name and a new number, which might be number three, full stop, with the file type txt. Stop the cassette again until you've done that, and typed in the nursery rhyme. Then we'll show you how clever WordStar is at searching for and exchanging words. The first thing to do with your nursery rhyme is to save it on disk, and you should use the Control K S command. Since you don't want the text to vanish off the screen when you've transferred it to disk, so type Control K S. Do that now. Now just make sure that the cursor is on the first letter of your text. That is the T of the first this. Do that now. Now call up the so-called quick menu by entering Control Q. Do that now. After a bit of drive activity, you'll be rewarded by Quick Menu, a selection of helpful WordStar features that you'll get a lot of enjoyment from as you become an experienced user. 
If you look at the list, you will see that the selection A offers you the search and replace facility. Just type A and don't press return. Do that now. The system now asks you what word you want to find, and you should type the word pig, P I G, return. Do that now. Then you're asked what you want to replace pig with, and you should type the word elephant, return. Do that now. The next question asks you if you'd like to choose any of the available options. We won't explain these here. What you should do is press G for global because you want to exchange at every occurrence of the word pig. Just press G return. Do that now. You'll now get a cursor that flashes at the first pig, and the choice of pressing Y for yes or N for no. Every time you press Y, one of your pigs will change into an elephant. Just press Y over and over again, but only until all your pigs have turned into elephants. Do that now. Once you've done that, you might like to change all the elephants back into pigs, but this will only work if the cursor starts out at the very beginning of the section you want to change. Searching and replacing only takes place in front of the cursor and not behind it. You can switch off the tape while you practice the search and exchange function. By now, you should be getting pretty confident about writing, editing, filing, and retrieving documents electronically. Your experience with search and exchange will have demonstrated that there are things you can do very simply with WordStar that would be extremely tedious to do with even the most expensive electric typewriter. But the system can perform a feat that is even more amazing than search and exchange, and that's something called block moving. But before we show you how that works, you should clear the screen, and the best way to do that is with Control K Q. That's the way you abandon a new or edited text when you don't want to save it on file. So just press Control K Q. Do that now. When the system asks you if you're really sure that you don't want to save what you just wrote, confirm the instruction by typing Y for yes. Do that now. And once you're back in the No File menu. You're ready to begin learning about block moving and copying. With WordStar, you can select and mark a part of your text. That chunk or block of text can then be moved, copied, deleted, or even written to another file. A good way to demonstrate block movement is to write out the lyrics of a song that has a chorus. You need to write the chorus only once. Then you'll be able to copy it out over and over again after every verse. You'll find the lyrics of a very famous old English folk song reprinted on the back of the card in the cassette box. Take a few minutes to type the lyrics in, just as we've printed them on the cassette inlay card. Begin by creating a file called Tavern with the file type extension txt. You do that by typing the word Tavern, then without a space you type a full stop, and then without a space type the letters txt. So, please create a file named Tavern. Full stop. Txt. Stop the tape until you've opened that new file. Now that you have a file to write into, just stop the cassette until you've put the words of the song on the screen. Type them more or less exactly as we have, and please don't forget to number the verses. What follows will be easiest to illustrate if there's a verse number on each paragraph. Except the chorus paragraph, which should be clearly titled "chorus" or "refrain." Now, just position the cursor over the first letter of the word "chorus" or "refrain." Do that now. The next thing to do is to mark the chorus or refrain for block movement by pressing Control K B. Do that now. Now move the cursor to the end of the last line of the chorus or refrain, but make sure that it covers the full stop and not any of the letters. Do that now.
Finally, mark the end of your block of text with Control K K. Do that now. If you did that correctly, you will see that the marked block is now shaded to show you precisely what you're going to copy. And now it's time to move the cursor down to the position just above the beginning of verse three. The cursor should be resting above the number three. Do that now. But in order to move the block successfully, you have to create a space to receive it. On the main menu, you'll find Control N under Miscellaneous, and the panel tells you that Control N inserts a return. Just press Control N. Do that now. All that remains now is to press Control K C to copy. Do that now. That should have copied the shaded block without affecting the original sight of the chorus. You can make a third copy of the chorus at the end of the song merely by moving the cursor down to the bottom and pressing Control K C again. No need to insert a return because there's no text below the third verse. Move the cursor to the bottom of the song and press Control K C. Do that now. How impressed you are by what's just happened depends on how much you actually saw happening. Chances are that some of your newly copied text is now out of sight, so we really should tell you how to look over screenfuls of what you've written by the process known as scrolling. If you look at the command panel on the screen, you will see that you can scroll an entire screen by the commands Control C and Control R. Try those commands to look at your text. It's a little confusing if you aren't used to it. Firstly, because Screen Up means that you're going down your text, while Screen Down means you're going up, back through what you've just written. Secondly, the scrolling movement backwards and forwards through your text is so fast that you can feel a little disoriented at first. Soon, however, when you become a regular WordStar user, you'll be so used to the way text behaves on the screen that this will no longer be a problem. So just spend a few moments experimenting with Control C and Control R, and then we'll show you how to make your marked blocks look the same as the rest of your song. Once you've finished making copies of your marked block, you'll want to restore it to its former brightness. That's known as hiding the block, since it remains marked even after the text returns to its normal brightness. You can hide and display your marked blocks by pressing Control K H. When you press Control K H, the copies of the block will look identical to the original, but you'll have saved yourself a lot of typing. Press Control K H. Do that now. Since you've only been practicing, it's best if you abandon your edit by typing Control K Q. Type Control K Q and then answer Y for yes to confirm that you don't mind losing what you just wrote. Do that now. And now, as we approach the end of this audio instruction program, you ought to know how to get a printout of any files you created. Printing couldn't be easier with WordStar and the Research Machine's 380Z. A printer should have been switched on, connected, and set up for you before you started listening to this cassette. If so, you can select one or more files from the disk directory for printing. Press P. Do that now. Respond to the system's first question by entering the name of a file you want to see printed out, and press Return. Do that now. There follow seven questions. And you can answer each one by pressing return. Do that now. When you get to the final return, your printer will spring to life. If you like, you can now stop the tape until you've played with the print function for a while, and are confident that you can print any text file of your choice. Finally, you should delete any of the text files you created, so that the next user will have plenty of free disk space to work with. From the No File menu, select Y, which is the Delete option, 
and follow the prompts through until all the files bearing your file name have gone. Again, you can stop the tape until you've done that. And so we come to the end of this WordStar audio program for the Research Machine's 380Z computer. We've covered a lot of ground together, and we're sure that you feel that it's all been well worth the effort, since you've now gained valuable, hands-on experience of word processing. Although this is the end of this audio tutorial program, it should be the beginning of the road for you. The time you spend now learning how to make the most of information technology can save you countless hours of work later on.